promised we are going to continue our journey into statistical reasoning. We're currently looking at the 28, 2018 paper. Question two of that paper dealt with a scatter plot. Now, I'm going to work quickly through this question, folks, because it's really just a matter of looking at the graph and using the graph to answer the questions. I want to get to a nice, difficult question that was asked a few years ago. Okay, so let's have a look quickly. We see in a, fa a familiar question among professional tennis players is whether the, te the speed of the tennis serve in kilometers per hour is dependent on the height of the player in meters. Okay, the heights of 21 tennis players, that means there's 21 dots on our graph. And so our sample size is 21 if we need it. And the average speed of their serves were recorded during. So all of these dots represents a player and its average speed. So it's not the speed that they measured only on one day for the one player. They must have measured 10 or 15 for the same player and took the average and took his height. And that is what made it into the data. Okay, good to understand that. The data is represented in the scatter plot. The least squares regression line is shown. Okay, so let's have a look. What does this tell us? There's our least squares regression line, folks. Now we can see, don't um, use your eye, folks, to identify outliers. Outliers is the distance that the line, the point is away from the line. So this might over here might not be an outlier. This over here might not be. But there's a good chance that that point over there is an outlier because look how far it is from the regression line. Having said that, is the regression line a good representation for this data? Now, if I look at this diagram, folks, it's all about interpreting it. This, these dots that represent the 21 players that they looked at are scattered quite some distance around this line. The line has a positive gradient, which does say, yes, the height, there is a slight indication that the height of a person does influence the speed at which they serve a ball. But because the data is so spread, I can draw almost, not really a circle, but more of an oval around that data. So the relationship is not that strong. Okay, having looked at the graph, let's see what they ask. They ask, write down the fastest average speed achieved in this tournament. Now, folks, the fastest speed, this is where your speed is. The fastest lie over there. Now, if I come back to that, there's one, two, three, four, five lines. So the fastest speed is 200, and I'm going to write it here, 251 kilometers per hour. Now that is really smashing that ball. I don't play tennis, so some of you might laugh at me and say, oh no, that's not that fast. But to me it sounds fast. Drive a car at that speed and hit something, it'll be a different thing. Okay, 2.2. Consider the following correlation coefficients. Now these are the correlation coefficients that they give us. If we look at the three, they ask us which one of the given coefficients best fits the plotted data. Now, well, I can hear you all say that that one doesn't because it is negative. If the correlation was negative, our line would have sloped differently. There would have been a negative relationship. The taller you are, the, 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 the um, slower your ball moves when you hit it. Okay. Now, what is this 0 0.93? 0.93 is a very strong relationship. Now, for a strong relationship, this is what would have happened to this graph. We have got a graph where the relationship is a little bit more scattered. So, what are we going to choose? We're going to choose a correlation coefficient of 0 0.52 because how the data is spread around that line. Okay, there's quite a bit of variation there. Now they say, use the scatter plot 
and the least squares regression line to motivate your answer um, here in 2.2, the answer that you gave here. Why did we choose that one? And it's simple. The data items lie a specific distance away from, not a specific, quite a, a distance away from the regression line, which means there's more spread in the data. So the correlation coefficient is going to be weaker. It is still a positive, but it is a weak positive correlation between our two variables that we are looking at, which is the height of the tennis player and the speed at which the ball travels on the first serve. Okay, 2.3, let's carry on. What does this data suggest about the speed of a tennis uh, serve in kilometers per hour and the height? Okay, and I think we just answered that in the previous question. I'm going to move that answer down here. It is a weak positive. The line is sloping with a positive gradient and the correlation is 0.25. So there's a weak positive correlation. Now at this point I will add, if at all between the height of the player and the speed of the serve. Okay, and that is because there's so much spread around the line. If it's clustered closely next to the line, then it's a strong relationship. Then we would have chosen 0.93. Okay, 2.4 asks us, last question. The equation of the regression line is given as that, they say. Explain why in this context the least squares regression line cannot intersect the y-axis. Now, folks, at the y-axis, what happens? x is naught. What does x represent here? The height of the player. On a different planet where there's not three dimensions, a person can be naught units long, but not on the three-dimensional Earth on which we live. So it's impossible. A person cannot be naught centimeters or naught meters high. That is why the line, the, the, the intersection that this line could possibly have with the y-axis has no meaning to us. Because this flat person will then hit the ball at 27 miles per hour. It sounds ridiculous. Okay, somebody would ask you, what are you smoking your socks there? Nobody can be naught meters high. So this answer here is invalid um, at the y-intercept. <laughs>